Connections Ministry for allowing us to come together and spread the Word of God as we worship the Lord, as we enter into His rest at this very hour. We really thank God for this opportunity, for the good health, the sound mind, the sweet fellowship of the brethren through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it is the grace of God that brought us together. So as we start our sharing for tonight, I will ask everybody to join me in prayer as we acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together once again, as you promised, as you uh, counsel us to gather together, because in gathering there is strength. And we know that it is the presence of the Holy Spirit that motivates us, that constrains us. It is your love that was demonstrated on the cross that compels us to serve thee and worship thee in spirit and in truth. As we open your word, we acknowledge that we cannot do anything, even our understanding. It takes the presence of the Holy Spirit to open our understanding, put it in our hearts, and experience the power and the truth and the reality of your word. Thank you, Lord, for granting us all our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. But I will also encourage everyone, if you can open your Bibles with you, have your Bibles with you, because um, I don't want to say anything that comes from me. I want you to see it directly from the truth of the Word of God. What will I share to you tonight is about the three essentials, three important things that Christ talked about before he went to heaven, after he finished his uh, mission here on earth. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 16, verses 8 to 11. John chapter 16, verses 8 to 11. Jesus is talking here. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, verse 9, of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. So brothers and sisters, before Jesus went back to heaven after he finished his mission as the savior of the world, God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. After he did that, before he went back to heaven, He did two things. Number one, he prepared his disciples for his departure. And you can read that in John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Because Jesus knows that they will be troubled because he is leaving. And the, the, the way or the place where he's going, he said, I know that you know my, do you know the way where I'm going? And then um, Thomas said, Lord, we know not the way. We know, we don't know where you're going. And Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when Jesus said, I will go and prepare a place for you, Christ was talking about what he is going through to the cross. So the preparing of the way is the cross. So he prepared his disciples for his dis departure. And number two, he touches three important, three very important things that he discussed here in John chapter 16. When the Holy Spirit will come, he will convict or he will reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. This conviction that the Holy Spirit will do to the world, obviously this is a worldwide activity, worldwide movement of the Holy Spirit. These three, righteousness, sin, righteousness, and judgment, is the summary of the whole 
plan of redemption. Okay, so you will notice here that Jesus, the way Jesus defines sin is not transgression of the law. Most of the time when we, when we say, what is sin? Immediately we conclude, we jump that sin is the transgression of the law. But this one, Jesus is touching a very important thing about sin. Sin of unbelief. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin because they believe not on me. So we're going to go there one by one. What Jesus is saying here, he was talking about two things. Number one, by a statement, and number two, by implication. A statement is that no matter how good we are, no matter how religious we are, it doesn't matter what denomination you belong. If we are without Christ, we are lost. So we cannot trust ourselves. We cannot trust our denomination. We cannot trust anything that is ours from birth. So some people will say, I'm a member of Lions Club or whatever club, or I'm a member of whatever denomination. Christ is saying his through the Holy Spirit, without him, we are lost. So you will realize here that the Holy Spirit is the one that do the conviction Okay, and number two, please remember, the Holy Spirit is not a co-redeemer. The role of the Holy Spirit in the plan of salvation is to make the truth as it is in Christ real in the experience, in the present experience of the believers like you and me. So don't be confused. That's why the role, the, the role of the Holy Spirit. So some people, some of our brothers and sisters, they don't believe anymore in the Holy Spirit. And this is the result of how we approach the Bible about proof text and debate. So the byproduct of that, instead of looking the Bible, the Word of God, to tell us what it is, we look at, we study in the Bible, the way we interpret it, and now we are in trouble. Even ministers, even leaders, don't believe in the Holy Spirit anymore. The Holy Spirit became power or just another thing. So look at here. When he, who is this? The Holy Spirit. It is important. Verse 7, it is important. I tell you, it is very important for me to go so that I can send you another comforter. Now the comforter here, I know that we are living in a troubled world. We need really comfort. But the comfort that the Holy Spirit will bring us as a comforter is to let us know and to prove to us that we have already a blessed assurance of salvation regardless of what is going through in our lives as we wait for the second coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord knows that we are living, for example, if you go to the Sermon on the Mount, Christ was addressing this uh, sermon to the believers and then in chapter 6 jesus is much aware that while we are living in this world a lot of troubles a lot of concern so jesus said seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness that kingdom there that christ is talking about to seek by the believers is not building it is a person and that person is everything of heaven that is a precious gift from god and that person is jesus christ jesus christ is the kingdom and the righteousness of god and if we prioritize him in our lives as our creator as our provider and redeemer whatever situation will come to our lives including death of loved ones that's terrible yet we have a comfort so the comforter the holy spirit will come not to comfort our egocentric problems, but to give us a blessed assurance that in Jesus Christ, we have a full and complete blessed assurance of salvation. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing. Now, for that to become glorious and shining, the salvation of Jesus Christ, the great salvation that God obtained for us in Jesus Christ through His holy history, 
First, the Holy Spirit will convict the world. Not the believers, not the, the non-believers, but the world of sin. What sin? Because, why sin? Because they believe not on me. So number one, no matter how good we are, everything that is ours from birth, if we trust in ourselves, we are lost. The Bible is very clear. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. And lean to your understanding. Why? Because the nature that we have, the life that we have, this bias that we, we get from Adam is damaged, contaminated by sin. And the life that we live is purely polluted with self. And when there is self, everything that we do is focused to ourselves. I'll give you an example. If we do good, in the church, in our house, and nobody will tap your back. Hey, Joe, you've done a great thing. Of course, we are very happy with that. Oh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. But if nobody, if everybody will snub your great performance, self will feel bad. So that's how we are. It takes the Holy Spirit. The grace of God to empower us to submit to the Lord and surrender that Lord, without you, we can do nothing. And this statement doesn't come from ourselves. It originates from Christ himself. Abide in me. Why Jesus is saying, abide in me or remain in me? Because we are already in Jesus Christ at the incarnation. Remember Ephesians chapter 2 verses 5 to 6. We are already in Jesus Christ of the incarnation. So everything that is true of Christ in his humanity is true to us. Okay, that's the statement. Number two, the implication. The implication is this. I will give you an example. In the Philippines, wherever you are now, if you are listening, you will be listening with this message. Do an experiment. You go to, to today is... It's a highlight of the Sabbath in the Philippines. But today is uh, the Sabbath just, we just after we started, it's Friday night here in, in New York. So I will challenge everyone, not a challenge for bad, but a challenge for, of experience, that we go to the mall on Sunday. In the Philippines, you go to SM on Sunday, and then look for somebody that is a little bit smaller than you, and kind of uh, examine it that you will, you will discern that this guy is a little bit weaker than me. You have to make sure that two qualifications, smaller than you and weaker than you. And this is what you're going to say. Excuse me, my brother. Uh, of course, with respect, they will say, yes, what is that? Then you tell this to them. My brother, I have something to tell you. Of course, they will say, what is that? that from head to toe, there is nothing good in you. What do you think that person will react? He will be happy for that compliment? Brother Wesley is <laughs> showing me his fist. So when you do that, you have to prepare yourself and run. Why? Because it really, it is really an insult to our egocentric life. From head to toe, there's nothing good in me. I'm helping people. I'm doing things in the church. That's exactly what we are outside of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit is convicting us that from head to toe, there's nothing good in us. Now, the Lord knows He is aware what is our situation today. That's why He gave us the whole, He gave His Son to be our Savior. The Holy Spirit will make this truth as it is in Christ become real in us. That's why we, being sinners from birth, He doesn't condemn us because we are sinners. But He will hold us responsible after we encounter the truth of the Word of God that our only hope, our only hope for salvation is nothing else but in Jesus' blood and His righteousness. I will give you an example. Brother Wesley, 
For example, tonight, uh, to the parents, brothers and sisters who are listening now, God bless you as we join together, those who are joining now in Radical Reconnection. The Lord is radically reconnecting us together to feast from the Word of God every day, but especially on Sabbath day as like this time, as such this time. If you are all parents and I am the teacher of your, of your children, we have a called Parent Teachers Meeting. Because your children failed something in their grade. And you know why I failed? This is the situation. I am the ch children, I am, I am the teacher, you are the parents, and your children are my students. I told them to get a soil from the moon. You understand that, Paris Wesley? <laughs> you were shocked. And if they don't get soil from the moon, when they come back next week and they don't have soil from the moon, what will happen to their grades? Down, right? They fail. Now, with that failure of their grades, the question will be, who is responsible for their failure? The parents, the teacher, or the students? Hmm? Galing niyo mang sisi, ano? The teacher. Why the teacher? Because I am requesting something that is impossible. Unless you are all astronauts, from the grand grandparents to the great-grandchildren, you're all astronauts. You go to the moon and get some soil in there. However, next week you will not arrive back here. So still a failure. So if God is looking for something from us that we cannot do, then he is responsible. So that's why that God doesn't condemn us. God sent that his son to condemn the world. We have to let the world know that the purpose of God giving his son, Jesus Christ, to the world is not to condemn. But as soon as we hear this message and we say, ah, oh, not of those, not, 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 none of those, then God will hold us responsible. He cannot do anything. Powerful as he is, he cannot do anything. That's why, because God is love, he doesn't want to put 45 caliber in our head and tell us, accept me as your savior. Can you imagine if I'm courting my wife? I love her very much because she's so beautiful. And my beauty is not really compatible with her. So what will I do? I will have 45 caliber and I will tell her, Hi, Remy, you're so beautiful, but I love you very much. I'm not sure if you will love me back. But if you will not love me back, you will receive this 45 caliber bullet in your head. So what do you think the reaction of Remy? Oh, yes, Kuya AP, I love you very much. Why? Because she really loves me. It's because of fear. Because of fear. So God did not give us the spirit of fear, but spirit of love. Because we love God because he first loved us by demonstrating, by giving his son to us, to the world. What is the purpose? Not to condemn, but to save the world. So if we are not sinners, if we are good from head to toe, you think we still need Jesus Christ in our lives? That's exactly what happened to the Israelites and to the Jews in the time of Jesus. Christ became a stumbling block. Why do I need Jesus Christ to be my righteousness, to be qualified for heaven when I'm already good? When it comes to the law, I am blameless. Oh, so this is the first thing that the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. Because from head to toe, there's nothing good in us. Yet, God doesn't hold us responsible for being sinners. But after we receive the knowledge of truth, I will give you a verse that many of us always use this verse and call it the unpardonable sin. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. You can go there. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. It says here, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth though more sacrifice for sins. And then we take this verse 
and tell the Bible students, you see, you know already the, the Sabbath is the seventh day of the Lord, and then you don't keep it, the Lord will barbecue you in the lake of fire. <laughs> Why you don't express your sound so people will know that I am, I am facing you. You are so quiet there. You see, we think that the Bible, the Bible students, most of the, the people that we produce in our churches, we produce a lot of liabilities. We produce a lot of backsliders. Why? Because this is the way we do our approach, our evangelism. We cook the fish inside the cooking pot before we take them from the sea. Oh. Is that possible? We cook it first before we take it from the sea. But that's, what, that's really what is happening. So most of the people that we bring to the church, because our goal is by number how much people we get baptized, and of course, for the record, we are not concerned about what's the effect. So by the grace of God, we really need to come together. We need to have a radical reconnection with the truth of the word of God. This verse, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, is not talking buying milk on Sabbath day or putting gas on Sabbath day. We are not, we are not encouraging to, the brethren to do that, but this is not what it is. Look at the context. If we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of truth, there, is no, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. You know why? If you go to verse 10 and verse 14, Christ came to the world and he only died once. Meaning, from the sin of Adam up to the last baby that will be born before Jesus comes, everything has been taken care of at the cross. You see that? The sin that we commit now contributed to the death of Jesus Christ. So when we realize that through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, we ask forgiveness, what, did, what will God do to us? He will forgive us. Why? Because of the blood of Christ. Open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, what light? The light of the cross. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ. What does it do? It cleanses us from how many sin? All sin. It cleanses us from all actually it, it forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness so when you hear the word blood of christ where is that of course at the cross because in the bible blood is life so when you see the blood shed meaning it's life laid down you see so the conviction of the holy spirit is that without christ we are lost one more thing about this sin the conviction what is the problem of the Israelites? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. What is the reason why they were not able to enter into the promised land? Did God make a, a mistake by promising and he changed his mind? No. Open your Bibles. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. We see that they, talking about the Israelites that came out from Egypt. Can you imagine? All the Israelites came out of Egypt. But when they go to the promised land, what is the, the reason? They were not able to enter in because of unbelief. They did not able to enter in because they were sinners. The Lord knows already. The Lord did not require them to get soil from the moon so that he will bring them to, to promised land. And if they don't get soil from the moon, he will um, wipe them out. No because of unbelief so what is the prerequisite of unbelief first we have to encounter the truth in its purity and that's exactly what is going on nowadays and by the grace of god the radical reconnection is giving us the final words of jesus christ so that when we encounter the pure truth what is this pure truth the word of god himself the word of Jesus Christ himself brought to us by the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. 
And the greatest enemy of this truth is our preconceived mind. When we hear new truths from the Bible, it, even if it's written in the Bible, if we can read it, we don't take it as it is. Because we trust so much in people. Brothers and sisters, let's trust God through his word and nothing else. So our only hope of going to heaven, our only hope is only built. My hope is built in nothing else but in Jesus' blood and what? And his righteousness. You see? So that at the end of that song, when he shall come with trumper sound, oh may I then, not in myself, but in him be found, clad in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand. Can you imagine? In our experience, you are not faultless, but through the grace of Jesus Christ. Faultless we stand. Thank you, my sister. Faultless to stand before the throne. Who is able to make us faultless? Jesus Christ, of course, through the Holy Spirit. So you see? So we're going to go to the second part. Righteousness. Look at this. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of righteousness. Why righteousness? Go back again. Of righteousness, <laughs> in verse 10, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Hannah. Brother Wesley, brother, uh, ang pangalan itong kapatid natin? Francis. <laughs> Umamot si brother Francis, hindi na siya kilala ng partner niya. Mabilis ka mag-react. Okay. So, did you ever ask yourselves, or at least study this verse, what is Christ going back to the Father has to do with righteousness? Look at this. Of righteousness? Remember, the Spirit will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. What is this righteousness has to do with going Him back to the Father? God did not send Jesus Christ to the world to be a tourist. How Washington, D.C. look like? Or the Empire State of New York? Or the rice terraces in the Philippines? Or the highest mountain in the Philippines? Ano ngayon sa Mindanao na highest mountain? Mount Mount Apo. No. God sent Jesus Christ to be the Savior of the world. And how will Christ save us? By fulfilling the righteous requirements of the law, which is perfect righteousness. Did you see? So, I, I will give you two verses on what is this righteousness, okay? Let's open our Bibles to a very familiar verse in Romans Chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because at the time of Paul, from Jesus, the apostle, to the time of Paul, Rome is the world superpower. From Alexander the Great to Rome, they conquered the world. Right, brother Francis? But there's one thing, Sister Ian, there's one thing that Rome, Alexander the Great, King Nebuchadnezzar, one thing that they were not able to conquer. You know what is that? Death. Now Paul is presenting this gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed. Why? For it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation from what? From sin and death. This is the only way. This is the only solution. This is the only um, antidote for sin and death. Because when there is sin, there is death. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. First to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. And now go to verse 17. For in it. What it? The gospel. For in it is the righteousness of God revealed. Wow. How did God reveal his righteousness? Through Jesus Christ. By sending his son. So by his miraculous birth. By his perfect. By his miraculous birth. Christ was qualified to be the savior of the world. And by his perfect life. He met the positive demand of the law. Which is perfect righteousness. Yet perfect. His life was. 
that body that he took upon himself at the incarnation, which is our sinful, fallen, Adamic life, has to be crucified at the cross. Please open your Bible to Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do, that is weak through the flesh. The, the law of God is requiring perfect righteousness from us. But because of sin, sin weakened us, and now we are not spiritual anymore, we are carnal. And the law is requiring something spiritual, which is perfect righteousness. We cannot do it. So what did God do? Romans chapter 8, verse 3. God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And on the account of sin, Hannah, what did God do? He condemned sin in the flesh. Wow. So sin has been condemned already. Praise the Lord for that. That's why when we sing, um, what part of that? When peace like a river. <laughs> My sin, not in part, but a whole. What happened to that? Was nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Do we, do we believe this? So this is the righteousness of God in the gospel. In the person of Jesus Christ. So number one that we need to know. The gospel of Christ is the power of God. In it was the righteousness of God revealed. How it was revealed? From faith. Not from human understanding. It's a divine revelation by the Holy Spirit. So it starts with faith. It doesn't end up with works. It starts with faith and ends up with faith. Now go to Romans chapter 3, verse 21. This righteousness of God was witnessed by the law and the prophets. So whatever teachings we do, it must be in accordance to the law and to the prophets. If I, eat, if I have a lifestyle vegetarianism, if I will become a vegetarian so that God will save me, that's not according to the law and the prophets. If I go to the mountain so that I will not receive the mark of the beast, just the motive going to, to the mountain so that I will not receive the, the mark of the beast is already mark of the beast because we are trying to save ourselves. And that is Babylon. Bab El. Bab means gates. And, and El is God. So Babylon is man trying to reach the gates of God by its own effort. We know it has been taught to us, which is true, that Babylon is confusion based on the experience of Nimrod and all the people that after the flood. Just in case, maybe God will change his mind and there will be a flood again. Let's build a tower called Babel. What is the purpose? They want to go to heaven. They want to save themselves by their own efforts. To go to heaven to save themselves. So that is the word Bab El, Babylon. So what happened there? There was a confusion because God doesn't want them to fall from that building. They will die. So God confused them. God says, no, 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 no. It's not man's effort. It's not the, the effort of the flesh that will save you. So the, the real meaning of Babylon, man trying to reach the gates of God by his own effort. Self-righteousness. So when Christ, when the Holy Spirit will convict us righteousness, because he go to the Father, remember, who was the first person who witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Mary. And then what did she do to Jesus Christ? Yeah. The... Mary, Jesus said, touch me not. Wag mo akong hipuin. Yan yung English. But in the original, is grab. Why grab? Because Mary said, look, before we let just let you go, including myself, Peter and everybody, we let just let you go. You were taken by the Roman soldiers and brought to Pilate. Pilate did not see anything wrong with you. You are not qualified to be crucified. But yet, we just let you go. But now we know already the truth. That you are the Messiah. You are the anointed one because of your resurrection. Now I will never let you go. So she grabbed him. And then what did Jesus say? Don't grab me because I did not go to my father yet. So when Christ died, he did not go to heaven. Hannah, right? He didn't go to heaven. He has to wait for the right time to go to, to heaven. 
So, by him going to heaven is to declare that the job, the mission that God gave to Jesus Christ was already accomplished and that mission is, was extended to the disciples and has to be finished by the last day generation of Christians, which is you and me and nothing else. You see that? What a privilege for us that God has given us to, to finish his work. Praise the Lord. What work are we going to finish? That the only hope that we have for our salvation is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's why through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, he wants us to give a clear message of instruction so that we will not be defiled by Babylon, by the teaching that God did his part on the cross and you have to help God to complete his work. Brother Wesley, what is the difference between finished and complete? Because Jesus said that the cross is finished. Now it has to be completed. You want to know? This is just an example, okay? When you marry a wrong, when you marry a right woman, you are complete. When you marry a wrong woman, you are finished. And when you marry an addict, shopping addict, you are completely finished. <laughs> so what is this? At the cross, Christ finished the redemption that God told him to do for the whole world. Right? But that mission, that message will be completed by the remnant before the end comes. So Jesus is so specific and came to Daniel, to the four disciples. This is MRI, Mount Olive, River of Uli, and the island of Patmos. What is Christ's purpose? Why he has to? Because he doesn't want people to perish, to be deceived by the enemy. Why enemy? This is the situation. We always hear it from the radical reconnections. At the beginning, Satan has two ways of destroying people. Remember Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I give my life to my sheep. But the enemy, the thief, come to steal and destroy, to kill and destroy. Yeah. So Satan has two ways. Before, we, I will let us kill. When, when we say Satan is smart, he is wise. He is not wise because he is wise. No. He is wise because of, of time he learned from his experience. He keeps on corrupting the mind from Abel, from, from Cain to Abel, because when God told him the seed, her seed, will dismantle, will crush your head. So he put it in his mind. He underscored it. He highlighted it. So from Cain, Cain he corrupted it, ended up by killing Abel up to the whole generation until Jesus came. By using Herod. Can you imagine? Herod said, Oh, wise man, when you find the baby, I know that he's a king. So please inform me so that I will go and worship him. You think this is truth in there? There is truth in there? No. The Lord knows. So we must be careful. Satan was defeated by killing people in the dark ages. The more he killed people, the more Christians become converted because of the way the Christians uh, demonstrate and their face is glowing. We're glowing the, the much less beauty of Jesus Christ. People were crucified and they were see, singing, put into the lion's den. So he changed. The, the, second, the second way of his dealing, his approach, is he changed as an angel of light. He wants us to worship the Lord. He wants us to keep the Sabbath, to keep the commandments of God. As long as we are not connected to the truth as it is in Christ, at the end, we will be barbecued or swimming in the lake of fire together with Satan. Because misery loves company. Satan knows that his end is really swimming in the lake of fire, but he doesn't want to go there just by himself or the other angels that he deceived, one third of the, the angels in heaven. He wants us to be with him. So how does he do that? By making us religious. So Paul is clear on this, that we have the form of godliness, 
but we deny the power. What is the power? The gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, witnessed by the law and the prophets, brought to us by the Holy Spirit, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You see? So what Christ did on the earth, it was perfect righteousness. You cannot add on it, or you cannot add to it, or you cannot improve on it. You see? All we can do is receive it and say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. And because of that perfect righteousness that Christ obtained through his holy history, we're going to go to the third one, judgment. Why judgment? The Spirit will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Why judgment? Because the prince of this world is judged. What does it mean, the prince of this world is judged? Okay, let's go back from the beginning. I have a song called Our Hope Has Come. That is seven minutes long, Brother Wesley. And my friend told me, wow, Brother IP, that song is seven minutes, the plan of redemption. <laughs> beginning to end. Maybe sometime I will play it here. That's my original composition. The Lord inspired me with that. I, I will share that to you. But what is this judgment? When God created man, he created him in his own image. And then the last thing that God did to humanity, to Adam and Eve, was to give them power, authority to take care of everything that God created, meaning dominion and authority. Satan came, introduced his merchandise. You have your Bibles there? Merchandise. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 16. The talking, the talking, the talking. What talking? About his trading, his merchandise. What merchandise? If you have a good item and you want to sell it, what are you going to do? You say, Brother, Brother Wesley, I have this ugly merchandise. You want to buy it? No. Of course, no. Brother Stanley, I am the only one who has Wesley. this merchant. Wesley. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I mentioned earlier Wesley, right? <laughs> This E, everything E is something else that Wesley, Stanley, Epi, you know, it's, 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 it's easy to remember. But because it's of so many Lees, including Bruce Lee, it's hard to, <laughs> sometimes when you, when you age, you know, that is Wesley. Yeah. I have a, I have a friend, he said, um, three things, sign of getting old, three things. Number one, forget to less. The second two, I forgot. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, what is this? Merchandise. It's lie. He wants to be like God. When, when he says, I want to be like the Most High, I want to set up my throne, he will not set up another throne. He wants to take in charge of what is already established in there, the throne of God which exists from eternity. That's why when Jesus said he's a murderer from the beginning, he did not kill anybody else. But in his heart, he was already guilty of murdering the Son of God. But of course, at the cross, he was not able to murder the Son of God. He has no right. He has no authority. He was never able to touch Jesus Christ. Now, this judgment. Satan came and introduced his merchandise through Eve. I hope you have your Bibles there. When Genesis chapter 1, Everything God created the heavens and the earth. When you go to chapter 2, verse 4, it's not only God. It's the Lord God. Meaning this God is not just sovereign. It's not just God as powerful. But he is also a covenantal God. He is a caring God. Amen? The Lord God. So Satan said, did God say? Did God say? He will put something in you to put doubts. Now the way he is doing it now, it's no more killing physically because he knows that we will be resurrected. What he wants us to have is we, lo we lost eternal life by following, drinking the wine of Babylon. So what is this judgment? Because the prince of this world judged. So by allowing Adam to fall into sin, he took that authority from Adam. So Satan now is the prince of this world or the lord of this world. 
At the cross, open your Bibles. John chapter 12, verse 31. Let me see if it's 31 or 32. 31. Now the judgment of the world. The word now here is at the cross. Now the judgment of this world. Now is the judgment of this world. When Christ was crucified, the world, you and me, were executed at Christ at the death of Jesus Christ. When Christ died, we died. So now the judgment of this world is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of peace, shall the prince of, of this world be cast out. At the cross, the authority that Satan took from Adam was taken back by Jesus Christ. But to be legal, Christ has to die. And then at the resurrection, Jesus really paid the full wages of sin. So at his resurrection, before going back to heaven, remember what is righteousness? Because I go to my father. So before he went to the father in heaven, heaven Matthew 28, verse 18. Open your Bibles. Matthew 28, 18. All authority was given to me in heaven and in earth. What authority? The authority that was taken by Satan from Adam because Jesus is the last or the second Adam. Amen? So our only hope is not in our performance, but in what second Adam did for the whole world so that this message will go around the world and before Jesus comes, the devil will follow, will copy Jesus Christ to deceive us. Many false prophets, many false Christ will come to tell us that we can go to heaven by our own good works. So it's very important for us to have the final instructions of Jesus Christ. Amen? So it's very important for us. Now this message of the radical reconnection, the power of God's grace, doesn't come from us. God is just using us because God loves us so much and he doesn't want any should perish, but that how many? All. All should come into repentance. Repentance from what? Repentance from self because everything that we do in this life outside of the gospel through the presence of the Holy Spirit is driven by self. So brothers and sisters, the last point that I want to give to you this time, Satan has no more authority over us. Amen? But he still have ways to deceive us. Example, when we go to church, we have our cell phone and people are bringing the word of God in the pulpit. What do we do? Checking the messages of our friends. What? So Jesus said, these people, they worship me in vain. Because they are sitting inside the building to worship me in spirit and in truth. But their minds is on their friends. Mabuti pa yung friends ko. Pasyal lang pasyal. Kami nandito sa simbahan. Boring dito. So Lord have mercy upon us. So brothers and sisters, let's be serious. Be truthful and be faithful to the truth of the word of God. That our only Lord and Savior and Master and Provider is Jesus Christ provided for us by his perfect righteousness brought to us this time, this very moment. The Holy Spirit is convicting us that from head to toe, there is nothing good, not only in our neighbors, but even in ourselves. And we need, the only thing that we need is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And having the righteousness of Jesus Christ, we will realize that no righteousness coming from the flesh, coming from self, will contribute to that. So we have to go out of the deception of the enemy because he has no more authority over us. Amen? How do we know? By studying the prophecy. Apocalyptic message. After 1844, God Jesus Christ is so clear in his instructions that many false prophets, many false Christ will come. We use the Bible. Everybody's using the Bible. Satan masters the Bible. 
So how are we going to, to, to know that we are not being deceived? Spend time. That's why, for my last statement, brothers and sisters, the era of preaching the gospel in the four corners of the building is, is, is gone. It's done. So what time do we live in now? We are now preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in his purity and his clarity through the spirit of prophecy in the four corners of the earth through media ministry. Amen? Amen? So you will see a lot of people preaching the word. It depends on their spiritual level. But we need to grow in grace, in truth, in love and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we will not be deceived by everybody's using the word of God. So the, the foundation for us not to be deceived, to be deceived, we need to have the last prescription of Jesus Christ to be found only in MRI, the instruction of Jesus Christ in the Mount of Olive, in the river of Olai and Hidekel, and revelation in the island of Patmos. So may the Lord rich, bless us richly that we will continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and may this Sabbath be loaded with all spiritual things, activities, sweet fellowship in the spirit. Amen. So we just want to, to thank you and praise you. Oh, we have Sir Levy here um, from PUC and uh, Sister Daisy Aranal, praise the Lord. Lem Ola Onalius, praise the Lord. All of you who are sharing, who are coming, who are joining, let's come together and really praise the Lord for his goodness, for his mercy, for his instruction, for his Holy Spirit that leads us into all the truth. What truth? The truth as it is in Christ. So to close, to Sister Soli, Panganiban, Mariano, and all of you who, who join in Facebook, in whatever platform you, got, you are joining, Happy Sabbath to, to all of you. ATLG, you are not with us physically, but we are one in the spirit. So praise the Lord. Uh, sa pangalan ng Radical Reconnections, in connection to the ministry that God entrusted us, the power of God's grace, we really thank the Lord, we praise the Lord for bringing us together to come and feast from His Word. Amen? And rejoice in the truth as it is in Christ. And please remember, my hope is built on nothing else but only in Jesus' blood and in righteousness. Amen. God bless you all. Happy Sabbath. Good night. And we love you all in the name of the Lord. We'll give now the time to Pastor Soriano. Thank you. Praise God. Good, uh, good night. No? Gabi na sa inyo dyan. Take the best hour of rest because the Holy Spirit will give us dreams and visions, impressions of how His marvelous grace is moving its heart its mind in this critical moment of earth's history we glorify the name of the lord his glorious appearing can now be felt felt by all of us so sa atin lahat sa buong pilipinas is now getting online we glorify the lord we praise him for the message that is given to us. So I even uh, encourage our editors, our writers, to put it into writing the words that was delivered to us by Pastor Epi. Because it is only the power of God's grace that we can be radically reconnected. The church, the whole world, members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church around the world, from the top to the bottom, we really need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that by His grace, by Christ's grace, we can hold on to His closing prescription, the healing 
of our blinded eyes, the blinded uh, eyes to see spiritually that the movement of his coming is at hand. We can feel it. We can see it. So God bless you all. The Sabbath morning here. I know that you have some uh, worship activities. You have some lesson study, working study. Later on, in the Radical Reconnection, together with Sasta Wright and Wesley Baggett, we will have segments also. We will discuss lesson quarterly in connection. What we have the lesson quarterly, we are going to discuss that one. The lesson quarterly that we have in line, in connection with the realities of our time. How to deliver the lesson quarterly in real sense, in an apocalyptic experience, so we can have the relevance of this lesson into our lives as we move a relevance into our footsteps. The lesson quarterly has to have relevance into our heart, into our mind, into our steps, so we can have our footsteps moving forward in accordance to the divine prescription, my beloved friends. God bless you all. And sa pangalan ng, uh, ng Panginoon na pinagtagpo-tagpo na inisa tayo, wala tayong, wala tayong mga physical engagement na bawat isa, hindi tayo nakita-kita. Pero by the Spirit of, the, of God, no, ay tayo ay pinagkaisa niya sapagkat isa lang ang mensahe ng kaligtasan. Why we are together? Because there is only one message of Christ for our time. It is only by His grace and His righteousness, the truth as it is in Jesus, delivered for us today. Praise God and see you in the next episode that we have. God bless you. Can you pray, Pastor? Closing? Shall we all pray? Our great God, loving Father in heaven, in the throne of your grace, we would like to thank you for giving us this wonderful privilege and opportunity. The holy hour of the Sabbath, for you have gathered your people there in the home of, Sis of Sister Riza and Wesley Bagat. Mm. Gathering your people as the living church, the church that is living, coming together in the virtual connections with all of us here in the Philippines. Mm. We have pastors listening. We have elders listening to us this evening. Let it be, Lord, that by your grace, all of us, we will be drawn into your closing prescription. Help each and every one of us to be a part of the final proclamation entrusted to your closing generation. Thank you for the whole Sabbath hour that we will be spending in the holiness of your presence, Lord Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.